Hey, Coach. How are you this afternoon? I'm doing real good. How are you? Doing good, man. Nice, man. Don't let everybody join. Then we'll start getting weird with it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, people are still joining. Um, I wanted to open up and ask, uh, does anybody have any wins for the week? Anybody want to share a win? Doesn't have to be a big win, it can be anything. It should be cool to hear from some people if they got any wins for the week. Boom, 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 boom. At most, I got is a contract for the first time. Nice. Hey, that's a win, man. That's sick. One step away from getting some cash in the bank now. Um, now we're getting flooded. Hey, you guys got spoiled today. We had like three freaking coaching calls today or something. I don't know what the, the probate one was, but it looked kind of cool. Neat. Anybody else got a win they want to share? Yeah, if you guys are getting cash buyers, you got to ask them for proof of funds or to put down at least, you know, like 3,000 bucks uh, for earnest money or at least 1,500. 
enough to weed out the uh, the wholesalers or whatever. Mute yourself. Let's see if I mute all. Does that work? Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> the power. I didn't know I could do that. All right, guys. I keep trying to start, but every time I look away, some more people are trying to join. So just give it another minute. But yeah, if anybody wants to unmute themselves and share a win, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. I don't have a win yet, but he's supposed to sign the contract on Saturday. Nice. Make sure you stay on him. Yeah. If, uh... <clears throat> I said it to him two days ago and uh he never even opened it to look at it so i called mm -hmm. i watched one of your videos <clears throat> and uh it said to call him and try to go over the purchase agreement together over the phone so mm -hmm. i ended up texting him he said he was busy which i understand and then i was like well when's a good time for you know me to call you and go over the contract together he was like saturday morning i was like okay sounds good let me set up a time he set up a time and i'm supposed to call him on saturday morning sign the contract at the time noise uh just some other like pro tips like <clears throat> like i just uh i sent a contract to a guy uh two days ago um but it was late at night so i just didn't want to like keep him on the phone forever i mean i thought about it but then the next morning i basically said hey could you sign that contract i didn't hear anything from him and then um basically what happened is i got on the phone with him he's like oh yeah i'm gonna sign it pretty quick and i think he forgot so what I did is I signed it my side of the contract because whenever you sign your side of the contract, they'll get notified that you signed it and it will go to the top of their, um, their email. And then as soon as you sign it, I sent him another text um, and he signed. So I do that quite a bit though, where like I, I have that little card where like, if I feel like they're forgetting about me or something, I'll sign my side of the contract so that it will pop back up in their, in their Google. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't work, but it, it's worked for me a couple of times where like, the other thing I do is if, if they're not replying and they're not signing the contract, I'll send them like little gifts of like, um, you know, like Mr. Bean, like looking at his watch or something, you know, <laughs> like, uh -huh. where are you at, bro? <laughs> like yeah. I'm waiting here. So just stupid so, stuff like that until they sign. Is it, is it, so is it normal to not sign and then wait to sign your part later or can you sign it already? Well, sign? I mean, like, um, it's kind of a, a power move. I mean, like if it's just with the seller though, and you already have a price that you're comfortable with, um you might as well sign it you know what i mean there's no harm right. um if it's like a jv deal or something though you might want to just have it in your inbox and not sign it until you find a buyer or you know so it just depends but it just yeah. pops up in their inbox that somebody signed the contract and it's kind of like oh shit i gotta sign that now you know what i mean it just reminds them it's just another reminder yeah. all right cool i think everybody we got a lot of people on here now um if anybody has any wins that'd be pretty sick um, i'm gonna share this this dumb little win so I created the fake Facebook profile group or whatever, the fakest friends on Facebook. <laughs> so whenever you guys uh, are trying to add a bunch of people to be your friends or whatever, um, you know, for your fake Facebook accounts when you're doing Facebook marketing, you can come here and just add a bunch of people, you know, obviously try not to add my real name because I started this stupid group, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, you can add James Lasco and Brandon Craig. Those are the only ones that I got around to today, but um, so supposedly if you got, you know, if you're making fake Facebook profiles, um, uh, and you're trying to add friends to your account, I'd like everybody to, uh, join the group. And then you guys can basically add a bunch of friends so that your Facebook looks, uh, authentic. And then, you know, just like a couple of things, like if you're commenting, um, in this group or whatever, like that'd be good, um, to show Facebook that you're a real profile or whatever, <laughs> but I thought that was kind of funny, but that's what that's what the people have been have been wanting is some some place where we could all add a bunch of groups and add a bunch of friends. So I think that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, today I kind of wanted to just like do a deep dive in what I think are the best uh, methods for you to get your first deals, um, and we'll we'll kind of go into this like especially for free um, without spending a bunch of money, you know. So the methods that I kind of came up with. Our Facebook is number one. That's going to be our $0 marketing guys. You guys need to be doing that every day. Um, you know, like each one of these little phones, like each of these little stupid phones, they have their own Facebook profile, their own market. 
Um, and then I wake up, I drink some coffee and I just post in all of them. And I, I reply back to people and I follow up people that I've been talking to about their houses on these phones. And it's made me a lot of money and it, it doesn't cost for anything really. It's pretty easy. Um, and I think you guys are kind of, um, not necessarily going after the right groups. So I want you guys to start thinking of again, like where's grandma going to sell her bicycle. Okay. If she's in Facebook trying to figure out what group she's going to sell her bike in, she's not going to go for the really big spammy looking garbage groups. Okay. You do want people in there and you do want comments in there, but you got to focus on like, what is a Facebook group in this area where people actually live, you know, cause we don't want to talk to a bunch of randoms. We don't want to talk to a bunch of crazy people. We want to talk to people that live in that area. You know, maybe they're having a garage sale, they're selling stuff on Facebook and they actually live there because they own a house. If they own a house, maybe they're looking to sell. And that's when our $0 marketing is really going to kick in and it's really going to work. Um, and then the way that you scale is you just get more devices and more phones and more fake Facebook profiles so that you can um, just keep having that conversation and, and just make it a routine. So that's, that's number one. Um, I think there's a bunch of videos. I mean, I guess we can open up the floor if you guys have any questions about the zero dollars. Um, and then we'll, other way, and then I'll go on to some other methods. Does anybody have any questions about, you know, doing the zero dollar marketing method better? Um, or just like what, what you think is working or not working or anything? Boom, boom, boom. Anybody? Hey, yeah, I got a question. Uh, so yeah, whenever we're making the, uh, the, the fake profiles mm -hmm. we're going in there or i'm assuming that we're going in there with like you know fake names too but is that just for like facebook's uh like for is that just so facebook knows that we're different people like if we get a contract under somebody are they gonna ever wonder like why are you not using your name well you you want to basically have a conversation okay so like the funnel is um you're going to be posting in these facebook groups someone's going to comment and say, Hey, I have a house for sale. You're going to send them a message. You're going to ask them like the four questions or like, I mean, I only really need like three questions. I, I say, you know, is anybody living in the property? What's the condition of the property? Um, and then like, what's your kind of motivation to sell or like, why are you selling the house? And then I'll try and get them on a phone call. And then like, you can either create like a Facebook group between you, them and your real name. Or you basically just ask them like, what's your phone number? I'd like to have, you know, my business partner call you. And then you call them and say, Hey, you know, I'm such and such. I buy houses. Um, you know, we're really interested in your property. We've already kind of looked at the comps. Like it, it seems like something we're interested in. And, and then basically once you get on the phone, then you send them the contract for the purchase and sale agreement, or you follow up with them until they sign the contract or until they sell that house pretty much. That's like the funnel. So you, I, I, all my fake Facebook profiles, they, you got to have a different email or a different phone number. That's the main thing. And then you have a different name for each account. And that's what the, uh, the weird thing was the, uh, the fake Facebook group. I mean, <laughs> so right. you can add friends and you want to spend a little bit of time to make your profiles, uh, seem legit. You know, I mean, you don't have to go spend a lot of time, but like, you just don't want them to look spammy. Like you want them to look like it's a real person or something. Yeah. I got you. And then as far as, uh, I seen somebody else, somebody post the other day, I think it was one of the coaches. He said that, that everybody wasn't able to log in like in different groups under their mobile devices that they can only do on, under computers right now. Is that still uh, going or everybody can log back in on mobile devices? Yeah, I have no idea, man. I'm totally, everything I've been doing is working still. So you can totally log in on your mobile device. All right, cool. Oh, uh, for the discussion tab. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't ran into that. So I don't know. I don't know what, who was having problems with that, but yeah, you basically go to the Facebook groups and you hit the discussion tab and that's where you're supposed to post, but I haven't noticed that. Um, and you can also post in the for sale thing. I mean, it just, it's just better in the discussion tabs. All right, cool. Yeah. I think that that was not working like on Sunday and maybe Monday, but I think it's working now on your cell phone because I yeah. was having the problem, but then now it seems to be fine. Oh, cool. All right. Who else says any other questions about the $0 marketing? When making your Facebook accounts, do you use just like, <clears throat> you like make new email accounts as well? Yeah. You got to make a new email account. Okay. You got to, I mean, you got to, you can't have your main Facebook profile and then have use an email and then try and make a fake account with the same email. You got to have a different email. 
Like that's how you're going to log into Facebook and log into your fake account as a different email. And how many like different profiles would you say is like, like, you know, a good amount to have more or less starting out? Yeah. I mean, basically, I mean, I, I try, I, I try and have one for each market that I'm really interested in. So I've got okay. a shitload. Makes sense. <laughs> I would, I would start with like three though. Otherwise it gets kind of overwhelming. Yeah, uh, yeah. So three different accounts. And like, what's really actually kind of powerful is if, you know, like, uh, what is it like last Monday or whatever, we found a buyer in Jacksonville. So I decided I was going to make like three of these accounts move to Florida. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, so I started blowing up Jacksonville on Facebook. Um, and we're actually talking to somebody about getting a deal right now, which is cool. So you can actually take all your fake Facebook friend groups or whatever your fake Facebook accounts and just like move the location of where they live and then join a bunch of groups. Obviously you can't join a shitload of groups and post the same day. So kind of spread it out a little bit. Yeah. But it's pretty powerful if you have like three devices and then you find a buyer who's like, yeah, I want to buy a house. And then all three of them uh, start posting in like 13 groups in the area. Don't do the same groups, obviously, but like little cities, you can pick different groups that they can go after. And then you're like hitting every Facebook group. And the reason that this works, guys, it's not like we enjoy making fake Facebook accounts and shit. It's because there's so many <laughs> eyeballs on these groups of real people that own real houses that are actually, you know, maybe need your help or could, you know, use your services and things like that. So that, that's the whole thing is it's like, you know, if I send one text to one person like that, I'm only talking about one person, whereas with Facebook, if I put a post in one of these groups, it gets seen by a thousand or 3000 or 10,000 or 50,000 people. And then if you do 13 of them, you know, that's why it works. That's why it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just kind of like, like working the system, you know, like, yeah, just getting in front of as many eyeballs as you can. It's just yeah, marketing. Yeah, it's just like, much. yeah, it's just going against like their regulations. But I mean, it's just a way to talk to people. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, you can you can try Facebook uh, hashtags as well. Like you can basically make posts and make hashtags in certain cities. That's another way you can do weird stuff. But the Facebook is the main free way that we like to show you guys. And then, you know, going on Craigslist and stuff like that. But we'll get into that next. So any other questions on the zero dollar before I go on to like the next method, I think? Yeah, yeah uh, sure. my, my bad. bad. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm brand new to like Facebook in general. So, are you when you create these profiles? Are you putting your actual face out there? Like, what are you building your page to make it look authentic? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so I don't know who this guy is, but <laughs> he's my Las Vegas uh, profile. So. This is James Lasco. Lasco is the name of my uh, air conditioning unit. <laughs> so this is all I'm doing. Um, and this is, well, I guess you can't see the whole profile. Let me see. Uh, yeah, you can't see much. But I mean, I just, I just took this random picture. I literally just Google, you know, Las Vegas friend or whatever. Oh, there we go. Or not even friend, but Las Vegas fun. And I picked this guy um he's this is this is like i mean it doesn't look like real real but it, i mean it looks kind of real you know i mean somebody might look at it and be like well this guy's weird or whatever so then i basically said he's self-employed i'm a real estate guy i invest in property around las vegas you know he went to las vegas high school las vegas nevada he's he's single because he's weird <laughs> I don't know. and then i just make posts and i make comments and then uh, i use him to basically blast uh all the facebook groups in vegas uh he's gotten me about like two deals and you know probably last like three months or something like that so it's definitely worth doing and definitely worth uh you know pursuing and continuing to to build this kind of stuff up how long do you stay in a particular market before you decide to like all right i'm done with this this market for the zero dollar marketing method well, I like to experiment with my, with Facebook. So like I'll, I'll find different, like, I like that guy in Vegas though, because if like, he's got me two deals and those deals have been awesome. Like I sold them to people that are turning them into Airbnbs or whatever. So I just kind of keep him there, but Vegas is pretty saturated. So um, he'd probably be better moving to Florida with all the other fake, <laughs> um, but I like to experiment with uh, my Facebook profile. So like before I spend a bunch of money and buy a list, I'll make a bunch of fake Facebook groups go and start posting. And if I start getting some action and like, you know, maybe a deal even, or like I get a lot of conversations started, then I'll buy a list in that area and I'll start cold calling and I'll start going crazy. But I mean, why not? It's free. You know what I mean? So like, that's kind of how I wound up in Alabama and Alabama has, you know, paid me tons of money. So I started 
posting in Facebook groups in Alabama, just on a whim. I don't really remember why I got a deal in mobile or mobile, whatever it is, Alabama. Um, and then as soon as I got that deal, I took that money and I basically bought, you know, uh, a big list and I started going nuts. And then now we've been consistently closing deals, um, in Birmingham and Huntsville and, and mobile. So that's what I do. I, I use it to experiment in different markets, you know, like the next place I'm probably going to go after that's kind of weird is going to be Wisconsin and Ohio. I'm not really up there in the Midwest. So I'm going to just do some Facebook stuff first. And if I get any deals or I get some traction, or if I find any really big buyers that I like, then I'll buy a list and I'll start doing batch and doing more stuff in those places. So that's kind of what I do. That doesn't really answer your question, but that's what I do. No, cool. Thank you. No problem. Can you get away without doing the Facebook? Yeah, but I mean, I like free money. So that's why I keep doing Facebook. So um, I'm also in Las Vegas, and I just started two weeks ago. Yeah. So I've been um, adding a bunch of groups um, in Pahrump and Henderson and stuff like that to my personal Facebook account because I haven't made got a phone to do my second account yet. Mm -hmm. But um, I was wondering, how are you making your sales offers based off of the fact that right now the sales market in real estate that I was looking up in Las Vegas, people are selling their homes at 45% over asking price. So, yeah, you can offer up to like 80% in Vegas. It's crazy. And you can still sell it because of Jesus. just so like, buyers. Buyer, buyers in, in Phoenix and buyers in Nevada are are paying like above asking because they want it. They want they got more money than they know what to do with pretty much. And okay. um, they're turning it into Airbnbs and stuff like that. In Vegas, I'd recommend you look at uh, Henderson, uh, Reno, Carson City, um, and that's that, those are the ones that I like that I think are, okay. so that are not too saturated that you could go after. Okay, and then um, would I be able to uh, network with you and um, to, what, like to help me find like buyers and stuff like that? Yeah, in Vegas for sure. Um, did you watch the thing that we did on Monday where I showed you how to scrape buyers? Because you can find buyers in Vegas like that, dude. Like I Vegas I was... is stupid. So, All right, I'll tag you in that, but it's basically using uh, email uh, scraper and basically going into those real estate investor Facebook groups. Like with your main profile, I would join as many real estate investor Facebook groups in Las Vegas as you possibly can um, and then scrape the emails. Okay, cool. Um, I don't think you have to double close in, in Vegas. We, we did do double closes though. Now you can do, I think you can do assignment. You just got to call title companies in Vegas and ones that'll work with you and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Cause this is my second week. So I'm trying to figure out all that stuff right now. Yeah. But yeah to answer your question, I, we did do double closes because they were big deals. They're both over like 20 grand. So we, we double closed twice. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if I've actually ever done an assignment fee in Vegas or in Nevada to be honest. So I'll have to look into that. Okay. So I'll just have to learn about double closing then. Yeah, it's just a different contract, um, but it's a good, like my rule of thumb is if I'm making less than 15 grand, I'll do an assignment fee. If I'm making more than 15 grand, I'll do a double close. Okay, cool. Cool. Anybody else have questions about $0 marketing? I do. What's up? I've been on, I've been on, on the Dallas Fort Worth area for like the past week and I've been posting on groups and all that stuff on the and i even made it like a list on the where i don't know you, to see where's the hottest zip codes and i haven't got any uh thing on facebook like no least people not even commenting on my posts so maybe mm -hmm. i should try like a different market or what i mean i you, you, i would try and stick with it with a different week but Try and join different groups. Like you gotta, you gotta branch out. You got, like I said, like where's grandma gonna sell her bike? Like, are you joining the really big, ridiculous uh, groups where people are trying to sell rims and you know Botox and life insurance and stuff? Or are you in like the smaller, more niche groups? Like when you're going in Dallas, like Dallas is like cool because there's just so much potential. Um, but you know, like I was already looking at Fort Worth, so um, you want to see like think about like where. Where can you find real people that are, might actually, you know, want to sell their house? So, I mean, it's just such a, a busy growing area, but like you could go after Garland, uh, Louisville, South Lake. So then you start joining Facebook groups around here 
not necessarily just typing in Facebook, like Dallas marketplace. Like that's, that's, that's not going to be a great breeding ground for success. But if you did like maybe Garland, uh, community chat, Garland, Garland, yard sale, Garland, you know, stuff like that, you know, and then you kind of, or Mesquite, Mesquite's been a good one. Uh, Carlton, uh, Flower Mound, like all, all these areas are, are booming. You know what I mean? So you just gotta, you gotta try and get smart with it and like, look at the groups and see, is this a spam crap group? Or is this like, uh, are, does, are people that actually live in this town going to be in this Facebook group? Or is it just going to be a bunch of haters saying, he's a scam or whatever, you know, like you gotta, you gotta bounce around. You gotta experiment. Irving is good. Arlington, you know, all these places are real busy. There's just so many houses that there's no reason you shouldn't be able to find a few Facebook groups with real people in them that are actually looking to sell their house, you know, flower mound. Okay. So you got to experiment. Um, but yeah, don't just go straight for like the Fort Worth garage sales or the Dallas yard sales. Like those groups, they're just not going to work. You got to, you got to experiment a little bit. All right. Thank you. No problem. Oh, people in the waiting room. Hey, you said, hey, y'all said that um, aside from the Facebook accounts, like if we're looking for cash buyers, a good way is to do, y'all said LinkedIn accounts? Yeah, that's a pretty cool way. So, so you, you go just, to LinkedIn, you're kind of searching for like individual people or groups as well, just like Facebook? Nah, you're looking for individual people. I mean, it's not like the, the best way, but... It's just a way that nobody talks about that I thought was kind of cool. And I did send some messages and I did actually find some investors. So like where, um, what uh, state are you looking for investors? Uh, Houston, Houston, Texas. Yeah, so then you just literally type in Houston. You say Houston, Houston's pretty tight? Yeah, uh, investors. Houston's an awesome market, I think. And then like, he's in a home inspector, leasing consultants, business acquisition, founding, real estate investor, angel investor, Holden Chang, man. You got you to connect with this guy. I'm just kidding. Holden <laughs> Chang. You can just hit connections. Uh, and then like there's posts. He's a brokerage, real estate investing. You know, all these people are in Houston. But I mean, in Houston, man, there's no reason you shouldn't get buyers from the Facebook groups. There's a lot of Facebook groups over there that have a lot of people. Yeah, I was joining a couple today, and I tried to join things that kind of had like only like ten to fifteen thousand people in it. Yeah, man, there's people still joining the Zoom, um, or buy a buyer's list. So we we've been doing deals in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. And yeah, we've kind of been uh, stealing the buyers from Houston. Um, so it's been pretty good for us actually, because they like to buy across the border. But I mean. Uh, look how many cash buyers there are. there's you no know, almost 200,000 like you shouldn't have too hard of a time um, finding a cash buyer from Texas yeah um, I think I'm it. also gonna I think I'm also gonna go the route of buying a cash buyers list just yeah. because yeah. I mean um, that national like that. that national buyers list that we have in mighty networks you should call some of the ones in Texas because I've called some of them and they're pretty good yeah but we've been yeah, doing cool. Beaumont yeah, the cool thing about that one is, man, I went over that uh, list and I seen, I'm not really from Houston, I'm from Lubbock, Texas, so, but I seen that there was actually uh, two cash buyers from my hometown and from my, like, my original town that's like 12 minutes from there, like real small population, but to know that there's people actually out there doing that, like, right there in my little town of 8,000 people, yeah. it gives yeah. me, like, a little bit better, like, makes me want to do a little bit more knowing that people are still doing it anywhere. Yeah, keep it simple, man. I mean, I was helping some random person in uh, Arkansas and they closed like six deals in their little town. So it's like, you know, if you can do it in your town, like you're, you could be sleeping on gold, you know, like that's the thing is like, don't don't go virtual if you got lots of deals right where you're at or you don't really, you know, if you're not comfortable trying to do everything virtual, you could do it in your own backyard and, you know, there's still buyers and there's still potential just as long as your town isn't super small, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do in Houston because that is my hometown, but I live right here in Houston right now. So, cool. So I'm a, I live right here. I'm gonna try Houston, Channel View, Beaumont, uh, all the east side. All right, anybody else got uh, questions about zero dollar marketing? Bah, bah, bah. 
this isn't zero dollar marketing, but what do you do if you just can't find somebody when you're driving for dollars? Like none of the information that Skip traces, you can't get a hold of them. Like the people are like 90 something. So I'm not even sure if they're alive at all, but the house is like super overgrown and vacant. Yeah. Um, but I just can't find anything for anything that comes back for the people. Yeah. So you can put um, like a package on their front porch, like just get like a weird, you know, orange envelope and then just have like a piece of paper and that says we'd like to buy your house here's my number um you can go and check the tax assessor um you know you can you can try and skip trace on different platforms and see if you can find somebody you can, you can ask the neighbors if they know anybody um and then you can kind of you know you can knock yeah, on doors i think i might have to ask the neighbors if they're even still like living because it shows that they're like 97 the husband and wife or something and then the house has just been like untouched for like a couple yeah. of years and they could live so, out of what state. would be the case if they were uh, not not living anymore? What would um happen? i mean you'd, ha you'd have to go to the the city um like people and basically ask them like who owns this property and if they die you know it, it's probably in probate it'll go down to whoever their their next of kin is or something like that um i don't know if does anybody else know anything about that but I just skip trace everything. And if it doesn't work, that's why I move on. So like when you guys are driving for dollars, like I'd try and get a list of at least a hundred people, you know, and then skip trace all of them and then blast through them. Cause if you just have like one deal or one weird house, that's like, got you excited. Like I've got, I've got a house right over here that I've been trying to find the owners for a couple of months. And I have no idea how to get a hold of them because there's nobody answers their phone or <laughs> nobody knows what happened. So some houses are just ghost houses, but you stay on it and you stay motivated and eventually if you if you dig deep enough you'll probably find the owner but it's always good just to move on you know if you can't if you like like i would just try and skip trace everything you can find the tax records you know and just do everything you can but then just move on to the next house if you can't figure it yeah that one's like at the back of my mind like i just keep driving by it and seeing it but i'm working on a bunch of other stuff i'm just yeah. super curious about it i think i will just go talk to the neighbors though so. yeah talk to the neighbors put a package on the front porch skip trace on a couple different things try true people search try batch try prop stream or see if anything comes back different and then um yeah that's what i would do all right um, hi, I, i'm yeah i'm in rhode island um really small state i, I thought that it, it would be pretty smart maybe to start in my own backyard but um is it good to start in a, such a small state like rhode island or is it best to just kind of go virtual i, I kind of all the local groups that i have is in rhode island you know and um, the houses in this state, is, they, they, they sell pretty expensive. It's like, you know, a half a mil and up for a lot of the places. So I got a lot of pins today. Um, thank you for your response on my comment from earlier. It was super helpful. Um, but I, I'm just wondering, you know, I, I'm stuck now in, in regards to when I engage a seller, you know, kind of having that conversation. I watched the video, so that, like I said, that was helpful, but like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to transition now on how to get a buyer to like, uh, you know, how to finesse that. Is so it, did is you it get like, a house it, under contract or are you, what are you talking no, about? No, I didn't, get, I didn't get a house under contract, but I, you know, in negotiating these prices, is it, should I keep in mind where I'm going to find this buyer to, to like, kind of like, you know, show that they have the cash or like what's best to do like is it best to kind of find a buyer first and then kind of work with a seller to see if you can connect the dots like that or well i guess it sounds like you need more confidence so i would go with finding the buyer for sure so i would try and find a buyer as soon as you find a buyer you know you're going to have that connection you're going to ask them you know what kind of houses are they looking to buy and then you'll be able to find them a property you know or you find them a really good deal because if you find the deals the buyers will come you know, it's, it's either one or the other, but we always have two customers, motivated sellers and cash buyers. Once you find some really good cash buyers and you can just focus on motivated sellers. Um, but Rhode Island is a cool market. I mean, I, I think it's a, I think it's a home run. I would try and, you know, stick it out where you're at and, and find some good deals and find some good buyers. And I mean, you could always tap into New York buyers, you know, New Jersey buyers, Massachusetts buyers. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, you're just in a, in a place of wealth. Um, and there's probably a lot of buyers out there. So find a buyer that you can actually talk to on the phone, you know, use the Facebook groups, use whatever you got to do to find some buyers, skip tracing or whatnot. Um, and then, yeah, just find out where they buy or what their buying criteria is and go nuts. I see. So you should offer like, um, like half of what the market value is for a house. 
So if it's like the average house is being sold for three hundred thousand, your asking price as far as for buying should be around one fifty. <laughs> Or is that? Well, I mean, that's that, like the dream. That's like the dream. I mean, you know, you'd be an idiot if you if if somebody was going to say, "Hey, here's a badass car. I'll sell it to you for half price." You know, you're going to want to buy it. That's why we we try as wholesalers to get it for the best price possible. In Rhode Island, though, man, like you're probably going to like if you tell people fifty percent of the price, they're just going to laugh at you. You know that you got to you got to find that balance of what's going to be a real good deal so I can actually sell it, uh, and you know what's realistic. So I always try and get the seller to say their price first, and then I try and squeeze the juice out of it is what I call it. And you basically just walk them down and see what the actual bottom price that they'll sell for is, and then get it under contract for that. Um, we tell you guys between 45 to 60% of ARV, and that's because we want to make sure that you're getting a deal under contract. Um, but, you know, I mean, you guys are smart people. Like, use your best judgment to, to basically say, hey, look, if I can get this, if it's worth 300000 you know, I wish I could get it for 150,000. Like that sounds awesome. But is that realistic? Probably not. If you offer them 200,000 though, and they agree to that, that's still a slam dunk. You can still make, you still have a hundred thousand dollars spread there where you can make some money. You know, we're not trying to, I mean, I want to get rich as fuck, but you know, we we're still just going to do one deal at a time. So you got to basically say, okay, well, if I can even make 5,000 bucks on this and I only work a couple hours, it's like, that's still worth my time. You know what I mean? But if it's yeah. so, so basically Get the best price you possibly can. Okay. Yeah. 60% of ARV is cool. Most buyers will want to buy a property at 70% ARV. So if you guys have to figure out, you know, what you're going to do, maybe figure out what 70% of the ARV is and then deduct your assignment fee from that. So you could say 10,000 bucks from that. And then that can be what you offer. You know, that's, that's a cool, that's a good way to do it. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of, Depends on the market. And, and as you do more deals and as you talk to more sellers and as you get more no's, you'll realize, okay, well, what if I raise my, my offers a little bit more? And then you'll start getting houses under contract for that number and you'll be able to talk to the buyers and the buyers will really be able to tell you if it's a good deal or not. So that's what I would do. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? So, um Sorry to bring up the, the Vegas market again, but uh, the 46% or the 50% offer for other places, other than places that call in Vegas, they're up, uh, selling it above asking price. So in Vegas, I would above, offer like 75% ARV. Shoot for that. That'll be your go to okay. number. Okay. Yeah. And then like, just because just, just Vegas is so expensive. I mean, we got all of California dumping money into Vegas and Arizona, you know, so all of the housing market in this area is going nuts. Another cool place that's around us is Idaho. You know, that could be another virtual market for you. This seems like a lot of California is moving to Idaho. So those are the places that I would kind of focus on the uh, whatever West Coast we're on. All right, cool, guys. Um, and then the next one you guys should be doing is driving for dollars. You know, I mean, we basically, if you live in a big city and there's a lot of houses, you guys should really be thinking about driving for dollars, finding properties. You want to be taking pictures of the houses that are looking like they have a lot of growth or they've been abandoned or they have, um, you know, boarded up windows. And if you don't want to drive for dollars, it's always good to, you know, hire some bird dogs, you know, put on, put some, you can join a bunch of, uh, Facebook groups for people that are looking for work. And you can say, Hey, look, if you are in a big city and you want to send me addresses, if I close anything, I'll send you 500 bucks to a thousand bucks. All right. So this, these are some ways that you can really start getting some free lists. Um, but the reason driving for dollars is so powerful is like, let's say that one guy, he lives in, in Dallas, Fort Worth. Like if I'm virtually going after Dallas, like I'm here in Arizona. So the only houses I'm going to be able to buy are the ones from batch leads that I can skip trace, that I can look at. Whereas he can basically literally drive around, or you in Vegas, you know, you can, you can literally drive around the area, look at boarded up windows, write down those addresses, and I will never ever be able to contact the owner because I have no idea about that house. You know, where, so that's why driving for dollars is so powerful. And that's why it really works to get your first deal and to really close a lot of deals because all the virtual people that are blowing up people's phones, texting and cold calling and stuff, they're not able to get in contact with those owners. So you can, you know, leave packages on people's doors. You can skip trace their addresses. Uh, you can, you, you know, there, there's just ways that you can do it because they may not, um, 
be on people's call list, whereas they can be yours and that can be your personal list. So that's what I would, I would do is first always be doing Facebook, you know, but the next thing that you guys can be doing, if you're really hungry and you're really looking to get deals, um, start driving for dollars. If you don't want to drive for dollars, then, you know, do some bird dogging where you, you have other people bringing you lists of leads and then you're skip tracing, you're calling, you're texting. Um, and that, those are like ways that you're really going to be able to up your game without spending any money, pretty much. You know, you just got to network with people or you got to drive for dollars, do the Facebook. So those are the first two things that I think everybody in this mentorship who's serious about making money as wholesalers um, should be doing. So let's kind of open the table to maybe driving for dollars or, you know, finding bird dogs. You guys have any questions about that? <laughs> yeah, Kimberly. So for when you're doing driving for dollars, because I was going to start doing, um, Paul put a video up about doing it virtually. Mm -hmm. So I was going to look into doing that, but I'm not quite understanding what you do once you gather the information on the banquet, banquet or uh, in distressed houses. And so you skip trace them. So you can go to a website called truepeoplesearch.com. And you can uh -huh. put it in there and the address, and that's going to pop up with some phone numbers. And then you can start calling those phone numbers or emailing those. Um, and that's the freeway. So that, that's like okay. the go-to. So if you find a bunch of properties, um, yeah, you can do that pretty much. And then you basically just call the owner make them a cash offer, you know, and you hunt around and, and that's like, it's good. You're going to be your go-to freeway to drive for dollars. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? About driving yeah, I have a question. Yeah, what's up, man? Uh, what, what's your take on driving for dollars in New York City? I mean, my uh, business partner, I can't remember the place he lives, it's like Whiteland or Whitesville or something like that, but he drives for dollars in New York, and I think it's a good way to do it, man, because there's so many, like, abandoned buildings. It's just getting in contact with the owner and seeing if it's owned by the city yet or if there's still somebody who owns it. So I think it's a good way to drive for dollars, but, I mean – I've never, I've never been to New York, dude. So I don't know what it's like to actually drive for dollars in New York. Like, can you drive there? Like, I just, I always see movies and stuff where you can't drive around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can drive around. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, I, I just wanted to hear your takes. I know on a couple of the other videos, uh, you guys talk about how uh, rough, you know, New York City in itself is and how it's a different monster. And yeah. Well, it's just because each house, man, is like half a million bucks. So if you get one house under contract, you should be walking away with like 50 grand. Like, that's what's cool about New York, but that also means there's so many freaking people in New York all trying to get these deals. So driving for dollars though, since you're there would be a good way to definitely get your first deal for sure. All right, cool. Appreciate it. Yeah. And I would go more towards like, um, around the suburbs, you know what I mean? Like the, that's where you're going to really find some gems. Um, I don't know like, what it's like really in New York, but that's where I would, I would go first. It's like, like I would look on maps, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't think New York city, um, we'll just click New York and say fuck it. But you can basically find some nicer suburb suburbs areas, and then kind of go for like, like almost all all suburbs have like a shitty neighborhood around them, and that's kind of where I always try and go. So you you could go like Astoria or you know Edgewater or something like that, um, and, and just kind of drive around those. The areas. way New York is, New York City is just weird. Edgewater is actually in Jersey. Oh yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like cities, within the five boroughs is like five cities all within one. Yeah. So when you say suburbs, it does get a, a little tough, but I, I kind of do have an idea of what you're saying. Yeah. I'll do my best to apply that. And I mean, like you can go for like the really rough areas, but I mean, the buyers don't really want houses necessarily where, you know, it's too sketchy. So you want to go to kind of the up and coming neighborhoods, you know, like I, I lived in Chicago and like, there was always these areas that were like basically getting, they were ghetto, but they were getting bought out and they were becoming really nice areas. That's where a lot of investors want to buy houses for cheap because they see like, it's going to become something in the future and stuff like that. So just something to keep in mind, like put on your investor hat. Like if you were an investor, where would you want to own property in New York and then drive around for dollars in those areas? You know? Yeah, that makes sense. Just thanks. Like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I think. Cool. Uh, Nathan or anybody else? Hey, um, the pre foreclosures make things like um, is that something we shouldn't be bothered with when we're a two weeks? You cut later? out a bunch. Could you ask that again? 
Um, are pre uh, difficult? Is that why you shouldn't really do it? Or so I think I think what you're asking is our pre foreclosures difficult, and that's really what I do. Um, so I, I like pre foreclosures. Here's here's the thing that like is like the um, the warning label on pre foreclosures is if you buy a list of pre foreclosures, you got to go nuts on that list. Like you got to go all out on that list to get a deal because if you sit on it or let it let it pass, like it, what's going to happen is it's going to become foreclosed on or somebody else is going to buy it. So that's the main thing with foreclosure. And then as soon as um, pre-foreclosure actually takes a long time. So it takes like 90 days plus to, for the bank to actually take the owner. And what happens is the closer you get to that foreclosure, the more banks are going to be blowing your their phones up. They're going to be calling them all the time. They're going to be sending them letters. They're going to be texting, showing up at their house and being like, hey, look, like you haven't made a mortgage payment in like three months. Like we're going to take this house back. And when that starts happening, that's when the sellers are like, oh, shit, I got to move. I got to sell this house. And that's kind of the sweet spot for wholesalers because you can get you can basically get some like if you put 10,000 bucks in their pocket and you pay the rest of their mortgage off, like then they're not going to their their credit's not going to go to shit. They're not going to be like just ass out or, or homeless or in a shitty situation. So you're really solving a problem and you're getting a house at an incredible price. So that's why I like pre foreclosure is because there's a lot of motivation there. Um, now um, that being said, sometimes they're a little crazy or they're having a real hard time in their life. So you got to solve their problems and help them out. And then what's going to happen though, is if the house goes into foreclosure, right? That means the bank now owns it and it's really hard. You, you just can't wholesale a house that a bank owns. I mean, you, you don't know anybody at Wells Fargo who's going to sign your contract for purchase and sales. You know what I mean? Their whole thing is they just want cash. So they're going to put it on auction um, and they're going to pay, you know, they're going to make, they're going to sell it for pennies on the dollar, basically just to get it off their books um, because it was a bad loan. So that means that whoever wrote that loan, um, you know, sucks. Pretty much. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what happened. So pre foreclosures, really good to wholesale foreclosures. You, you, you basically can't unless you're getting some sort of transactional funding and you already have a cash buyer lined up, but it's just a pain in the ass. So that, I, I don't know. I hope that was your, your question. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Yeah, that is it. Thank you. No worries, man. Hey, uh, so how do you go about like pre foreclosures, like in like Texas? I think they said that in Texas, they don't really do pre foreclosures. It just kind of goes into foreclosure. It's the same process. I mean, pre foreclosure is just a fancy word for they haven't paid their mortgage and the bank. Oh, okay. So you can still find it. It back. just doesn't go up like for pre foreclosure. Um, they may, they may, I mean, like they're, they're pretty conservative on there. So they may just be like, look, if you don't pay, we're going to take your house. Like they're pretty serious in Texas compared to like California. You have like, you know, six months to like pay $5 a month and they'll still let you keep your house. And stuff. so I don't, I don't really know the exacts on that, but I think it's the same way, man. I mean, we we did uh, a pre foreclosure campaign in in Austin, and it, it got us a deal. So you know, it's just another okay. pain point and another motivation thing. Cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So Facebook guys, killer. You know, that's the zero dollar marketing. Crush it. Driving for dollars. Another amazing way to get a lot of deals um, that are going to be personally yours because you can actually see the house and you can do it. Um, and then the next one that I want to talk about is just like, is house hunting pretty much. So, um, what we're going to do is like, we're going to go to Redfin and we'll just do an experiment, right? Uh, who has a market they want me to look at, put it in the chat or, you know, or who is having a hard time finding houses or need something like what's a market somebody is living in. Phoenix. Look at love. Phoenix. <laughs> well, Phoenix has like no houses. Zonesboro, Georgia. Reno. Reno. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll start with Phoenix because she was first. So, um, what I want to do is go to more filters. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to look for houses, um, fixer uppers only. Apply filter. Um, and so these are considered, I mean, in Phoenix, like, <laughs> I don't know if any of these are real, but that's what I yeah, want you guys to do. Yeah, what I want you to do is just go to here, 
hit fixer uppers for sale. Um, I mean, I wonder there's, there used to be a thing where I could do for sale by owners or other properties, but I think it's not on here anymore. Anyways, though, so we got 49 houses. So if these are considered fixer uppers, uh, that means they need a lot of work and it's already kind of done. So, I mean, it wouldn't be too much of a trouble to, you know, make a list of these houses that look legit uh, and call them, even if it's owned by a real estate agent, if you already have a cash buyer, you know, you could just start talking to them and just being like, Hey, look, like how much work does it need? You know, you can kind of tell like, this is a, uh, I mean, this looks pretty good for a fixed driver, but it's not like, oh yeah. So like the yard is kind of fucked up, needs some work. Um, so then you could kind of like take this address uh, and run some comps on it and try and figure out like, so if they're offering, you know, what is it? Uh, 269,000 copy you know, put it in batch or whatever you guys are using to run your comps or look at what the houses are for sale. And this is what I call house hunting. So look at this on the MLS. This says that it's worth, what is it? They're selling it for 260 something thousand. It's worth 348,000 or whatever. Like, like that's pretty legit. You know what I mean? Like if you guys could even get them to come down and just have a conversation and be like, look, I got cash right now. Um, what's the best price you guys would be willing to do on this house? And then, you know, you got to make sure that the real estate agent's cool. Or if you can figure out how to talk to the owner, like just have a conversation with them, you know? So that's like a pretty sick way for you guys just to start talking to people. And if you get pretty creative with it, you can start, you know, calling these people, offering them a little more money, maybe doing a, a deal on terms or something like that. But if you're just trying to wholesale it, like, you know, this is called house hunting guys. So you, you go on Redfin um, like that. I like that tab. Where, where it just says fixer upper, because I mean, why not? You know, if it's literally a fixer upper, like that's kind of what we're looking for um, as wholesalers is deals on properties. Um, and you can actually call them, see if you can get it under contract, have them take it off the MLS and then just, you know, make sure the contract isn't assignable and, and go nuts. I mean, some of these might be wholesalers though, too. Like when I see stuff like this, I think this is like a wholesaler investor special, you know, that just always kind of makes me cringe when I see that. I'm like, yeah, that's another wholesaler trying to sell this house. But you know, if you have enough conversations or if you guys are really trying to like do this full time, like what's going to be, there's, there's no downside to calling these people and having a conversation with the seller. Right. So, I mean, I think that is like a, a pretty straightforward way for you to practice talking to people um, and just kind of get some deals. So this is what I call house hunting. This is literally like you're just going on Redfin and Zillow. And I mean, even if you just like make it in your schedule, I'm just going to call like five of these properties a day, you know, over time, you're going to get a deal. So you can see, I only click real estate for sale on Craigslist. <laughs> um, and then I know there's a video that uh, coach Michael did where he'll show you how to filter um, like for sale by owners and things like that. So I would definitely check that out. Windows, duplex. Let's see if there's any duplexes. I like land too. Um, so yeah, but you can basically go in here, you know, spend a couple hours, especially if you're really focused in a market or if you guys did um, what I was showing you. Oh, now it's just going to show me a bunch of land for sale. Land is pretty cool to wholesale too, guys. This is where I live. I might buy this. Um, just because you can basically get it under contract. You don't have to worry about the property. Oh, this is those, these assholes, man. They, have this golf course. So they'll sell you land like super cheap. But then if you want to be part of the golf course, you got to pay like 50,000 bucks a year or whatever, just to be in the community. <laughs> Anyways, that has nothing to do with anything. This is what I call house hunting. This is another great way. Um, you really want to look for, for sale by owners, you know, Fizbo's or whatever. Do Let's just type in for sale by owner. By owner. And then you can kind of just start calling these people. Here's a duplex in Phoenix or in New Mexico. My bad. Anybody in New Mexico? Show contact. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what you're looking for, though. Is like real phone numbers for real people. It's going to make me do a little test, but I'm not going to do it. It's on Florida Street. Um, and call them and then have a conversation. And like, if you just want to practice like talking sellers down on price and giving them, you know, different criteria and different solutions to their problem you know, why not just go on the free websites? I mean, these are literally another great way to find free deals. So I think this is one of the more powerful ways um, to do it. And then you can also go on Zillow. Let's just look on Atlanta. It's probably not going to be shit, but 
Elena is such a hot market right now. So you can go to on Zillow, you can go to other listings. You know, a lot of these are just going to be other wholesalers or whatever, but um, for sale, you know, if you have a buyer, you know, he wants three bedrooms, one bath, um, and just houses. And, you know, these probably are all actually have real estate agents or whatever, but you can just start calling them uh, for sale by owner. Zestimate. See, they, they want above asking, but in Atlanta, above asking is still a deal. I mean, that doesn't that doesn't look like a deal to me. But you come in here, you make your your filter. Uh, let's see, you go to the last page probably because these are deals that have been on the market for a little while. Um, and this one probably just wants more money than they have. This is a for sale by owner. They want way too much money too. But I mean, like I said, guys, you can just kind of start digging around and if you spend like an hour a day or 30 minutes a day just poking around or set uh notifications on your phone for whenever a house goes um on the market you know this might be a good way for you to get another deal uh, completely for free and just kind of get going so i call that house hunting but i think facebook um driving for dollars house hunting and then i'm going to talk about jving i think these are the main things that you guys should be doing to get your first deals under contract so I hope that was kind of helpful. Anybody have any questions about that? I don't know how to say your name. Theresa, Theresa, Theresa. Yeah, you're right. When it comes to doing land comps, I have oh. one that's a, uh, it's a trailer home, but the land oh, comps yeah. I'm getting are about 20,000. So then my offer should be about half that. So it should be about 10. Uh, with land, I mean, maybe, yeah, I mean, around 10, I mean, land is kind of hard because if it's in a, in a place where someone could put a house on it, you know, you could, you could probably still offer, you know, 15 or something like that and still get a good deal. You just want to see what other land in the area has sold for. So if all the land in the area has sold for about 20,000 an acre, you want to see how long ago that sold for, cause it might've appreciated a little bit, but yeah, I mean, I, I would offer, I'd offer 50% on land and see what they say. Or try and get a price out of them first, because a lot of the times nobody know they don't know what their land is worth. They've just had it for a long time. You can just kind of ask them, like, uh, you know, what do you what do you think you'd be willing to part with it for? You know, or what's a good price on the land? See how motivated they are. See see what they think it's worth. Uh, I guess you told you said told me it was like they wanted like one hundred eighty thousand. So um, that's kind of too high, especially with just a mobile home on it, and it kind of might be in the middle of nowhere. But right, know. and when it comes to being in the middle of nowhere. Are you wanting to look more into developmental areas or being rural would be okay? Nah, I mean, the big money with land is somewhere where you can develop it. You know, land, I mean, with the mobile home on land is sick, but they want too much money for it. You know, like if you could get that for a deal, that would be a cool piece of property. But if they're trying to get top dollar for their mobile home and land, like that's not the deal. I mean, does that make right. sense? And it's yeah. going to be, it's at least 30 minutes away from town. So I don't even know if I should entertain with them. Hey, I'm going to come back at you with 10 grand, even though you wanted 180. Yeah. Well, no, the thing is, is they had like three acres. So you could offer them, offer them 60,000. And it's probably still be pretty decent. So, um, but I don't think they'll bite, you know, they want top dollar because they don't know what, what it's worth really, or what's realistic. Right. So, make them an offer of half of 180 and see if you can move it, you know. Uh, any other questions? No. Nope. All right, guys. And then the last way that I think you guys um, should all be trying to get deals uh, is just JVing with people. So let's see. Um, and I mean, I literally showed you guys last time how to find. Uh, you know, motivated stuff like buyers and stuff like that. But you really want to, let's see, let's go to the Birmingham one. Birmingham, Alabama. Um, but JVing deals doesn't cost any money. You guys just need to network with buyers, find out what their buying criteria is. Um, and then you just need to communicate with other wholesalers. Uh, you know, like, like here, I, I did make a post on this one. Um, be like, hey, I have buyers. And all I did is I just made an email. 
Uh, it's just JV Bears at real JV Bears Real Estate at gmail.com. I can't talk. Um, I'm in here somewhere. But I basically, I'm just like networking with other wholesalers, networking with buyers, and then just being the middleman because there's so much money uh, to be made by just being connected to buyers. So, and it doesn't cost anything. You can literally come in here, you can scrape all these buyers' emails, right? Find out what their buying criteria in Birmingham is. Okay. And, and then you just start building relationships with other wholesalers or even better, like someone who lives in Birmingham, who's trying to learn how to wholesale or, or something like that. And you see like who has a deal um, and you just start talking to them. And then if they have a house under contract, you know, like, like I'm, John Carter, he's, he's a badass dude. We talk a lot. What if I just scrape all these emails, right? I talk to the buyers, I get them on the phone. I say, what's your buying criteria? And then I call John and I say, hey, look, don't you have a house for sale? Like you want a JV on it real quick? Because I already got a buyer. Boom. I just made, you know, 50% of a deal. Didn't spend any money. I networked with like two people and I'm going to be able to make money. And that's kind of the future, guys. Like if, if your market is getting uh, overly saturated or if you're getting mad because your little Facebook posts, you know, don't quite work because you're not doing it right. Then you can just start JVing deals because then the more wholesalers in your market, the better. And then you just focus on disposition. You just focus on talking to the buyers. You get to know exactly what kind of houses they really want to buy. Um, and then you just communicate with other wholesalers and you make sure that the wholesaler actually has an under, under a deal, under contract. You find out what the best price is and you say, yeah, I'll bring it to my buyer um, and we'll split the profits 50-50. And that's just like the absolute best way is for you guys to get started wholesaling uh, without spending any money, you know, none of these take any money. So Facebook, driving for dollars, JVing deals, and then house hunting are all things that you guys could be doing on a weekly basis to really be closing deals and really making a lot of money. So uh, that's, that's what I think everybody should be focusing on. Make a plan. You don't have to do all of them. Just pick one that you're comfortable with or one that gets you excited and that you can do every day um, and, and just, you know, go nuts. So but I was just trying to figure out like, what's the simplest, what route for you guys to absolutely start crushing it. And those were the four methods that I think you guys should really, really be doing. Obviously we talk a lot about the $0 marketing, but there's other options out there for, for everybody to, to eat and, and make a lot of money and keep kicking ass. And then once you do get some deals then start doing my batch leads stuff and, and ramping it up with, you know, texting, cold calling and hiring VAs and all that fun stuff. But you guys have any questions about any of that, or I hope some of that was helpful. Bueller. This call is gold, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Are they going to be able to record this so we can watch it back? Oh, fuck. I hope I've been recording. Okay, we have been. <laughs> Scared me for a second. Yeah, no, all, all these are replayed. I mean, you guys need to okay. look at the past trainings in Mighty Networks. There's tons of tons of these. And whenever I come on here, I really try and deliver a lot of value. So we'll go back to some of those past recordings that I've done and just check them out. All right, cool. Where do I buy cash buyers? Uh, batch leads. Yeah, so Phoenix is a hot man. If you can get real deep in some of those Facebook groups, or I think I'm actually going to start a Facebook group for wholesalers in Phoenix. And then you can just cherry pick and ask people that are posting, like before they even post their deals, if they want a JV with you. <laughs> like you, could get, you can get real ninja with it. Man. It'd be pretty wild. Yeah, hey, I know you like really uh, like pro batch leads, but uh -huh. do you have any like... Uh... Any like uh, any kind of preference or like say uh, next level data? No, nah, I've never used them. My bad. I, I should. I've been thinking about like the next deal I get, like comparing batch and launch controls to see what happens. So whenever that happens, I'll let you know. But I've never used them. Um, I know Coach Michael uses them. I think Paul uses them. So I mean, they must do something pretty cool. So I'm sure they work just as well. They just do it differently. They make you buy like like 5,000 bucks or something like that worth of leads I hear. Yeah, my bad. I'm not, I'm not very helpful on them. No, you good. Learning all the stuff. I see a shitload of questions in the chat and I'm always too slow to read all of them. So if anybody wants to uh, unmute themselves and ask, let's do it. Otherwise we're going to wrap up, I think. Hey, coach, real quick on batch leads. I know you didn't talk a lot about it, but I was watching one of your mark, magic marketing videos. When you're doing your SMS blasts and you're doing that reply, you pay, is that reply part of your thousand per day 
Is that no? Is that totally separate? Totally separate. So those are my quick replies. I just I send a thousand initial texts a day, and then the quick replies don't count. And that's just like how we carry the conversation. So I mean, I can show you. I don't even think we did we didn't do very many today, actually. I'll have to ramp it up, but it's already getting kind of late. So we're going after Nashville and, and Knoxville right now. So we, we only did 507, but we get overwhelmed. So these are just like me blasting or whatever. So we'll just go to 600 real quick. Um, some guy wrote me a, a code so I don't have to click this button over and over. I still haven't used it, but I think that's hilarious. I don't know. I don't think he's on here today. Uh, then we go to the inbox. You know, we see, I think you have the wrong number. Uh, how much work does this need? So then we go to quick replies. I'm just going to ask them a stupid question. I don't remember putting a sign in my yard. All these people suck, man. Okay. And then this is my compliment campaign. I do a compliment campaign and I do my regular stuff. And the compliment campaign is just because as soon as somebody replies back to my text, um, then like the, the carriers and the people or whatever, like they won't, they'll, they'll, they'll not mark my phone number as spam. So that's the main thing. So like the first initial text is just to start a conversation. You're looking for rentals or personal home. Um, I don't know. It's none of your business. I'm looking for a personal home. Nah, I'm looking for a rental. <laughs> Does it create a phone number for you when it sends that? It doesn't use your real number, right? Like your personal no. cell phone number? No. So the way Batch works um, is you actually have to buy a whole bunch of phone numbers. I'm currently asking 475000 We're working with some people in Nashville, and what they're doing is they're buying houses like like close to like 80 to 85 percent and then they're adding if they can they'll buy it as long as they can add an extra room to make the value of the property go up so that's pretty cool i mean these people i might i'm gonna make them a warm lead um because i like to offer them but they're offering asking way too much i'm too young to sell anything <laughs> is this Teresa? no and like my go-to is just do you have anything I mean, a lot of these leads are, are nothing. Um, this is not Robert. Rude. Yeah, so a lot of these were just nonsense texts. But so the quick replies don't count as an SMS that you send? I mean, they don't. I don't count them in the thousand that I send. The thousand I send are to each individual number, and then the quick replies are just me starting a conversation with them and seeing if they want to sell their house. You know, like that's kind of what I do. No, so I got a kind of uh, promo code to batch leads. Yeah, so use my my last name L Y O N Lion, uh, and you'll get fifty percent off the first month. And you, I think you get like five hundred free skip traces or texts or something like that too. So just that again. L Y O N. So you just use that coupon code, Robert Lion. That's my last name. Just used it today. It works. Nice. Yeah. No, this is, this hope is, your is, hope your dog gets a treat. Yeah, bro. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. I hope your dog gets a treat. <laughs> uh, that's good, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, y'all got us watching so many, y'all are giving us so many avenues to, uh, to utilize in the platform. I figured I'd just dabble in batch leads while I do the zero marketing method just to kind of get a feel for it. Yeah. I mean, this is how I got my five leads this week. So, Robert, can you explain best leads real quick? Uh, so, I use it for skip tracing, text blasting, uh, and running comps. I mean, I've run, like, my whole business pretty much through batch leads and batch dialer. Batch dialer is just cold calling, basically. Um, but, you know, like, but what market are you in? Uh, um, Michigan. 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 I got a cool guy in, uh, I think, Cedar Rapids. He's a big buyer. So I don't know if that's Michigan. That's not Cedar Rapids. It's something Rapids. But um, in Michigan, anything near the lake is pretty much like gold. 
um, upper upper towards Canada is a little bit harder to find deals, but um, Detroit and some other stuff down here is pretty sweet. Um, so basically, I would pick a city in Michigan. Um, what I do actually is all basically first. Holy shit! There's a million cash buyers in Michigan. <laughs> Probably because the houses are cheap. Um, yeah. So. Looks like there's a lot of cash buyers right here for some reason. Um, those are all pretty random areas. Anyways, so I basically will come in here. I'll kind of dissect the market that I'm going to go after. Um, I don't know what this area is or why there's a lot of buyers here. Bangor. Uh, what's a big city in Michigan that you like or you're thinking about going after? Uh, probably uh, Detroit or yeah, let's do Detroit. Grand Rapids or Lansing, Grand Michigan. Rapids. That's what it was. My bad. That's where my buyer's at. He does a lot of subject twos, though. He's a, he's a cool dude, though. Um, so I basically will pick Detroit. I'll come in here. Um, I'll filter down, you know, what I do. So occupancy. Uh, no, I don't want owner occupied. Now nah, let's just do no preference for now. Residential. Property types, single family, um, not on the MLS. Uh, ownership info. I don't know. Uh, equity, 50%. You know, that's pretty much what I look for. And then what I'll do in batch leads um, is I'll basically cherry pick the pain point properties. So what do I mean by pain point properties? Well, obviously pre foreclosures, you know, these are active. Uh, Bash Leads is always like updating their MLS status. So all 46 of these houses are in pre foreclosure. Um, so I'll skip trace those. I'll skip trace the inherited. Skip trace just means I'll basically take the address and I'll, I'll find the phone number and whoever owns the property. Um, and then holy crap, 50,000 liens. That's crazy. So that I would do pre foreclosures, inherited liens, and then I would do vacant. Um, and I would definitely filter these liens down. I have no idea why they're, that's like the most liens I've ever seen in the city. So that's pretty crazy. Um, but you skip trace them. Once I skip trace the properties, I'll, I'll basically, you know, I did this. We did Nashville this week, you know, I'll just basically, you know, take all these houses that I've personally picked that I'm gonna go after and it'll give me the phone numbers. I'll take the phone numbers. I'll put them in a campaign for SMS or direct mail. I haven't really done direct mail. Um, I put them in here and then we text blast them and we send about a thousand a day um, from the text blasts. We're basically talking to the people that are motivated and we're starting conversations um, and, you know, we're seeing, you know, who wants to sell their property and stuff like that. And basically as soon as they say, yeah, I want to sell my house, we'll get them on the phone and we'll get them under contract. And that's kind of the, the method. And then what I do is I'll text blast the entire list um, and then from there, I'll cold call the entire list. And that's kind of our system. And that's what's really allowed us to do a shitload of deals and go crazy. So, gotcha. What would you say? Was that? What would you say your order of pain points is? Yeah, it's pre foreclosure, inherited, liens, vacant. Um, and then I get like way more um, niche down from there. So I made a video in the, in the mastermind or the mentorship and you can go to, you can just look in the search bar, magic marketing method or magic marketing list, just type in magic marketing and then watch that video. That's where I kind of broke everything down for all the filters and everything. So the, the order you have it on that video is the same order you look it up. Yeah. yeah okay. That's exactly how I do it. I, I wrote it all down like that. So I'll just making sure that's the right yeah. order I need to go in. Yeah. And like I said, if you do the pre foreclosures first, you just got to focus on that list because otherwise somebody else is going to buy those houses or it's going to go into foreclosure. So um, all the rest of the liens in like in real competitive markets, I've been doing liens and it's really allowed me to get a lot of deals. We've been going in Florida and just focusing on liens and we've gotten like three insane deals. So all everything works though. Inherited, uh, pre foreclosure and liens though are like the go to and then vacant properties um, is, makes it easier to wholesale basically. How do you know if it's a still still good market in the area or not? You just got to experiment. I mean, almost all markets in the U.S. are pretty good. As long as it's like a big populated area and it's not too like, I, I always suck at this word, but rural, too, too far out in the middle of nowhere. 
you know, you're going to find buyers like the, with inflation, with everything going on, the housing market prices are going to keep going up for a while. You know what I mean? And a lot of buyers are trying to, you know, find a safe place for their money and, and everybody needs a house to live in and stuff like that. So it's a good investment to buy cheap houses, especially, you know, why we get paid is because we can find, um, you know, discount properties in markets that are going up, you know, in markets that are going to appreciate in value or that you can rent it for more money. So you just got to pick a big city near you and just kind of go after it. Okay. So it's still okay to like do the money magic, the magic money market in like Dallas or. Fort yeah. Fort I mean, I, I would totally do that in Dallas. It's going to be better than Facebook. I think in Dallas personally, just because okay. you're, you're strictly talking to people that have, have a reason to sell their house, you know, so. right. And it's like an active thing, whereas the, the Facebook method is them coming to you, which is awesome. But, you know, having both is going to be what's going to allow your business to be the most successful. Perfect. Cool. All right. Any other last minute questions? I hope this was helpful. What's the smallest market you would stay or like what's kind of the smallest market you would do? Because I'm, I'm around like Amarillo area. So it's like the population is like 200,000 but I know y'all want to stay a little bit higher than that. Is that too small or is that still okay? I mean, the best advice I could give you is try and find a buyer out there and ask them if he's still buying an Amarillo, you know, or ask them where they want, you know, if you can find a buyer in a tiny market, then, you know, you'll be, you'll be killing it. You'll be a, a, a shark in a little goldfish pond, you know, so that, that'd be the way to be. It. But if you can't find a buyer, then you're obviously going to have a hard time making any money, you know? So that, that's what I would try and focus on. Because if you do find a buyer, though, like then you can use everything we're teaching you and just have your own little market and your own little gold mine. And that's what I want everybody in here to do. Like for a long time, Mobile and Birmingham and Huntsville was like my own little gold mine. Uh, and we went nuts. And then we wound up doing deals in Tennessee. And now Tennessee, each deal we do is about 25 grand. And then now we're doing deals in Florida and Birmingham, you know, and it's just kind of it snowballs. But you got to find that one place that's going to give you that consistency first. And you got to close deals and understand how it all works and stuff like that and then build on that so so when you find buyers you're posting like say we're doing the zero marketing method we're posting in the real estate um investor groups and uh posting like finding motivated investors to network with to make future deals with or something like that yeah i mean what i always do is um i'll go to the i'll join all those real estate investor groups and i'll say we're looking for uh, disposition wholesalers because you don't just need cash buyers. If you find a wholesaler who already has a shitload of cash buyers, like that'd be great too. So okay. we're looking for disposition wholesalers and cash buyers. Um, basically, you know, shoot me a message if you're looking for a hot deal this week. Like that's literally what I say. I'll, I'll tag you in last week's or Monday's video where I kind of, I found a cash buyer live on that video. It was like five oh. minutes. So I'll tag you in that video and then you just kind of do that and you scrape their email and you just say, you know, what's your buying criteria? And then once they give you the buying criteria, that's where I would focus because like the, the perfect storm would be you find a really cool buyer that you can actually talk to. They'd say, they tell you their buying criteria and within like one or two weeks, you find them a house because then they know you're serious. They're going to do a lot of business with them. Like that's the coolest way to do it, I think, because especially once you get connected with one of these buyers, like it's real motivating because they got the money. Now you just have to find them a deal and then you can basically use all these things that we're kind of teaching to find them a deal. So that's kind of what I like to do now. Okay. Hey, Robert, can you uh, tag me in that video uh, yeah. that you did about the batch leads explaining yeah, and stuff like that? Um, both of you guys send me a message because I'm an idiot. And I'll, I'll forget how to spell your guys' names. <laughs> uh, the networks. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm new to this, so after this Zoom call, we just go into your account and just message you. Yeah, just go to Mighty Networks. I'll, I'll try and remember. I just, I mean, okay. literally, I'll try and find tagging people, and then I'll find the video and try and tag them, and I'll forget what their name is already, and I'll have to go back. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's all good. But I want to help everybody, so I hope that was helpful, man. It's like 5.15. I'm going to hop off. Um, you guys have a good rest of your day and a good weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, peace. Thank you. Jumping up to